Yo, so I know there's a lot of guys that can talk about this topic, so I'm gonna give you a few credentials. I work with the largest YouTubers in the world, guys with 10, 20, 30, work with a guy with about 40 million subscribers, and one of the feedback that I get most often is how creative I am. And I've got a bit of a methodology around this, and I know editors and creativity, in a weird way, it's kind of hard to put the two together. You've probably struggled with creativity before, where you've got a project in front of you, a shit ton of work, and you just can't think of anything. And then that deadline's approaching and it's like, well shit, I guess I'll just give in without trying anything new. And I wanna talk about the idea of creativity today only because there's actually a lot of science behind it. I've not only gone through the science side of it, so Andrew Huberman, an amazing psychologist, he has a podcast episode on creativity, which I really enjoyed. And also I've got literally three years of just me grinding out editing projects. So, we're gonna jump straight into it. The first thing I kind of wanted to speak about is I've seen so many editors that get held back by the fact that they're just too scared to try anything new. You'd be surprised how much more creative you'd be if you stopped trying to be creative. Because here's the thing, right? There's something called the law of reverse effort, which basically means, and you've probably experienced this before, the more you try to be creative, the harder it is to be creative. It's almost like, you know, when you try to go to sleep, that's when you can't sleep. Or when you try to be productive, that's when you find it hard to be productive. Or when you're going in a social situation, it's when you're trying to be less awkward, that's when you'll have an awkward conversation. You'll stutter and you'll mumble your words and everything like that. So creativity is the exact same way. In a weird way, if you try, you become less creative. This is where I think being willing to mess up your edits in a weird way is the way you become good at editing. Some of my best work that I've got, even on my portfolio now, I've got work on my portfolio where it's literally a project from a year ago, a year and a half ago. But even till this day, it's still some of my best work here. And I'll have my portfolio linked in the description if for some reason you wanna see if I'm lying or not, like these other editing creators. But you can go see it and you'll notice that the work that, well, you will be able to see it, but the work that was my best, in a weird way, I went into it not expecting anything from it. It was the ones where I'm staying up kind of late at night, I feel like I'm gonna miss the deadline, I feel like, oh, I'm not even, I don't even know how to start on this, I've only got a voiceover. It's those projects where, in a weird way, they end up being the best. But the ones that I look at the footage when it's first been sent and I feel like I can do so much, they're the ones that I end up like not doing that well on. And the reason I think it is, is because when you feel as though you're not trying too hard, when you feel as though you're not trying to force a creative edit, you're not forcing a piece into the video for the sake of adding an animation, that's when your brain kind of naturally adds stuff in. It's almost like, you wanna think almost in terms of layers. Like this is something I call sand dune theory. I think you'll enjoy this actually. So in geography, there's so the subject you learn in school. There's, you kind of have to learn about the way sand dunes are formed. You know, those huge like sand mountains and deserts. And the way they normally form is, you just got like flat ground and you have like this little bush. And as sand sort of like wind blows across it, like it brings sand along with it, sand rushes like above the surface. And then when it hits the bush, there's like a tiny bit of sand that gets held back just because it can't go past the bush. And then that sand slowly, slowly builds up and it builds a tiny mound. And now that mound, whenever sand blows past it, it catches more sand. And then more sand catches onto that and it gets bigger and bigger until you have this sand dune that's built like miles wide. So that's what I call sand dune theory. And while I was learning about this in geography, don't get me wrong, hated the subject, hated the education system, even though I did quite well in it, but that's a story for another day. I found so many similarities between my approach to editing and the way sand dunes are formed. That's literally the only reason I listened to the lesson that day, but I approach editing in the exact same way. So let's say you have like this sort of stimuli, this audio that you're trying to work with and you're trying to think of a creative animation to make. Instead of thinking, how can I create this crazy animation frame by frame, something that looks like it's gonna be the best edit ever and I can imagine it doing well on Twitter already. Instead of thinking like that, just add something that feels quite intuitive. So let's say out of nowhere the guy says, I got hit by a tree and I had to go to hospital. Just imagine the guy said that in the video. Instead of you thinking about how you can make this crazy animation of a guy hitting his tree and then it goes, transitions into the sky and he's into heaven and he's dead or so, I don't fucking know bro. Like instead of trying to think of this crazy animation, just add a tree and add a guy who hits his head into a tree. It's like, it's kind of intuitive, right? And then you just kind of throw some PNGs onto the timeline, you throw some things onto your project. And then as you throw more things on, 
you will get more ideas. So you don't need to have a fully formed, what the fuck, there's a duck, there are ducks here. <laughs> Anyways, I didn't think there were ducks on in the park, but okay. So, fuck, where were we? So, hmm, we're talking about creativity. Yeah, so you kind of want to throw things on even before your ideas is fully formed. So when you barely have a vague image in your head, you throw things down. Because what happens then is that thing being on your timeline will spawn in new ideas in your head. It's almost like you will see that and then have more ideas. So this is, this is a quote I think you'll really love. So you probably feel overwhelmed when you're trying to make something creative or create a crazy animation. But the ultimate cure for overwhelm is action. It's the only cure. The only way you can actually beat feeling overwhelmed and feeling like there's so much that you need to do is by taking action in that direction. And then naturally the ideas sort of form in that, in that way. And um, the second thing I kind of want to speak... Yo, what's up? I'm recording. Do you want to come in? Are you making a video? Yeah, yeah, come, no, jump in. Shut the fuck up. Jump in, man. No, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to throw the camera on you, you know that? No, don't. Yeah, I will. You're going to be exposed. You're going to be exposed, you know that? Do you make vlogs and stuff? I'm recording, yeah. Jump, jump in, jump in. Nah, I'll cut it out. I don't look good on camera. I'll cut it out. Yes, you do, man. Come here. I have no. a YouTube channel. What, what is it for? Um, I record it. For what? You gotta come in now, uh, then I'll tell you. No, I look so bad on camera. No, you don't. Come. No, what's it for? Tell me what's it for. And I'll think about it's my OnlyFans, isn't it? Come. What? <laughs> 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 no, what is it for? Like, yeah, my OnlyFans. So you wanna no, like... I'm a, I, I do OnlyFans. I have recorded the part. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> what is that actually called? I do YouTube. Really? What's mm -hmm. it called? I'll subscribe you to can't, me. I don't tell anyone. Oh, I don't so tell you don't anyone. want people to like, subscribe? No, nah, I don't. What do hmm? you talk about? What I talk about? Yeah. Life, man. Life, innit? Oh, that's oh, so cute. cute. <laughs> Come, jump in. No. I'm gonna cut all of this out, anyways. Nah, I don't want it. You guys ruin my flow, you know that. It's okay. I'm just curious about what you were doing. Okay, what, do you guys just come to the park often or? Well, we was just, we had other plans, but we just came here. Like, was other plans like, being? Like, what was he gonna do? Was he not with my friend, but she's working, so. Is it? Yeah. Damn, so now you're just, you're lost in the park. We're gonna go what home are we gonna do? Yeah. We just thought, yeah. what are you doing? Like, I've never seen this before. You've never seen it? I'm a weirdo, innit? I'm yeah, such a weirdo. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's a weirdo, like. <laughs> Of course, of course, that's, that's it though, innit? Are you a weirdo as well? Sometimes, yeah. Oh. See, we're basically the same. We're a bit, see chemistry, yeah. of course. Well, yeah. What do you talk about in life? Hmm? What do you talk about in your life? What do I talk about? Yeah. Damn, do, do, I you? You do, I you? do I tell you? Do I tell you? Do I tell you? It's life. What do you think I talk about? What type I of person do you think I am? Tutoring, like telling people. Like, tutoring in here? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this is like how you do oh like God. these equations. Yeah, I saw those, bro. They just randomly came in. They don't normally come in here. Like they don't normally walk around yeah, here. They normally. Out there. Yeah, yeah. But fair play. Hey, what's your names? Dia. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna cut this shit out. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Dia and Sano. Good to meet you. Do you go six or more? No, I used to go to college, but I'm left now. So I feel like I don't need to go anymore. Okay, okay. How old are you? I'm at, I'm eighteen. You're eighteen so and eighteen, 18, 18 as well. Amazing. Okay, okay. Where are you? I'm 19. What's your name? My name? Oh, we're moving fast, aren't we? Now, nah, Saif. <laughs> Saif, good to meet you. Hi. Good to meet you, Saif. Saif? Saif, yeah. Saif, okay. Mm. Well. Fair play, though. Do you want, I, I'll be real, I need to get this done before sunset. Do you want to exchange answers and then we'll. If yeah. you want, yeah. No, you know, give me yours, my data's fucked on here. I don't really um, use. Oh my god, your mum rang me one second. Hold on. I don't really use Instagram, but uh, why is she... I don't want to be in a car. I'm gonna cut this shit out. Yeah. No, no, I'm gonna make you walk here now. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you do it like this. Like... No, I need to go. I actually spoke. You need to go. <laughs> thank you, thank you, dear. See? I need to go oh shit! Your mum's calling. I thought your phone was off. Turn it on. Oh. Put the buttons up. I need to go, so can you quick do it? Because <laughs> her mum's calling me. Your so. mum's on your neck, yeah? Nah, her mum's picking us up, so she's calling me, so I'll just need her now. 
Alright. Alright, well, take care then, yeah? Yeah, Idea, yeah. Bye, Sano. <laughs> Apologies, fellas. Um, anyways, where were we? So, yeah, the second thing I want to talk about is the idea of where creativity and where you get your information from. Because a lot of us, we think, okay, we're going to try creating a creative edit. But the thing is, the only way your brain works is by basically calling on old information. You, this sounds weird, but like, even me saying that I'm a creative person, and my client saying I'm a creative person, me having other editors tell me I'm a creative person, I'll be completely wrong. Like, most of my ideas are taken off of other people. It's me looking at editors that I respect, me looking at YouTubers that I respect. Well, honestly, it's more the editors because I stay more in the editing side of things. But it's like, there's so many editors that I look up to. And for me, when I was getting started, it was people like Finzo. There's a guy called Rush, Basement Rush on Twitter. Um, he was the editor. He was the editor for the side, man. It's crazy. We're working together now, so it's so cool. I used to look up to him like crazy when I first started. Um, there was a guy called Lufus, a guy called Zims. Like, there's all these crazy editors that I used to look up to. And I would basically look at their work, fucking analyze it to the point where I would just take parts of their animations and put it in mine. Of course, within context, but it's like, I would shamelessly take it off of them. And m some people would call that bad, but, but I'll keep it real. Like, I can tell them that now. I say it literally out loud to them because we're friends now. And they're like, yeah, I appreciate that. Like, nobody sees it as a bad thing when you copy people. As long as, like, not even as long as you give credit, but as long as you don't copy it one for one. And the truth is, even if you do try copying something one for one, that's still kind of all right, because you naturally will sort of, you will have your natural differences even if you try copying it one for one. So let's say you saw my work and you tried replicating it in your videos, literally exactly how like I did it, but in the context of your video. So different footage, same effect. Even if you tried copying it one for one, you would naturally, make it your own way because you wouldn't be able to physically like do it perfectly and that's not a bad thing that's actually how styles are made so i would try copying someone else's effect one to one would not be able to do it but then i end up making something that looks unique and then when i take so many different people's work that's when nobody really says like oh that looks like his style that looks like his style they just say like oh that's malice's style that's how sayif edits and it was because i was able to take off take off ideas from so many people's work so you need to actually, first step, actually be in, in taking good edits. Is that a word you would do? Consume good edits. Because if your brain's not consuming good edits, how do you expect to actually output good edits? So when you're being trying to be creative when you're sitting down trying to create good work, what you're actually trying to do is you're telling your brain, hey, go back into your memory store of what a good edit looks like and try to sort of replicate something in this context. But if your brain has never been fed information of good, what a good edit looks like, it's gonna put out shit as well, right? So you wanna basically clean up your information diet. So if you're on Twitter, if you're on YouTube, like whatever you're watching, just think about the content that you consume. Be completely honest. What's the type of content that you consume? Are you on Instagram? Are you on TikTok? Do you watch that kind of bullshit? When you're on Twitter, do you even follow like good editors? Are you active on Twitter? Someone once told me that, but I was never active on Twitter before editing. Like I was just, I just never used Twitter. I thought it was an old people app like Facebook. And it was only when my mate Vise told me to go on Twitter and to this day, still the best decision I ever made to go on Twitter. And more importantly, being active on it, following good editors, taking inspiration from them. Because when you are constantly taking information in, you've got an input, which is good edits, your, the process, which is the brain, and the output from that process, which is a good edit in your work, so your creativity, it's like, that's how a system works. Your brain is basically a system where it, it basically has inputs, processes it, and then puts out output, which is your work. So yeah, that's the main point I had about creativity. There is a lot more that goes into this, where you've got like, oh, converging thought processes, divergent thought processes, and then how the two intersect. And then you've got like a dopamine paths about, um, there's four dope, there's so much to go on. Um, I'm not gonna explain everything. Those were, those were the main points I want to talk about about creativity. But yeah, hope you find it useful. Mwah.